you can find the velocity vector, the acceleration vector, and the speed if given the position vector. So this will be our position vector. To find velocity, you have to take the first derivative of the position vector. What you want to do is take the derivative of each component one by one. So we'll start with 4t cubed i. The derivative of this is going to be 12t squared i. Just bring the i straight down. Bring down the plus sign and take the derivative of this part, which is just going to be 2, and bring the j down. So that's the first derivative. Since the first derivative is the velocity vector, we can move on to acceleration. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity vector, which also makes it the second derivative of the position vector. So to find the acceleration vector, we're going to look at these components up here and take their derivatives. So just look at this part right here. This part is going to be a normal derivative. It's going to be 24t, and you just bring the i down. So that goes right here. Now, as for the 2j part, you see the j and you think it's a variable, but that's not correct. This is really the same as saying a 2 is a constant by itself. There's no actual variable. You're just going to take the derivative of 2. So the derivative of 2 is 0, because the derivative of any constant is 0. It's really 0j, but in this case you don't really need to write the j part here. You don't need to include that component. So we're not going to. And we have our final answer here. 24ti is the acceleration vector that we were looking for. Now let's try a slightly more difficult problem. We're still going to look for the velocity vector, the acceleration vector, and speed. So this time, the position vector will be e to the t sine t i plus e to the t cosine t j. You can put parentheses around them to make it easier to see where to separate them. First, we're going to find the velocity vector again, and that's going to be the first derivative of the position vector. Notice how the component with i requires the product rule. So we're going to use a product rule right away. On the left side, we'll have e to the t, which is the derivative of e to the t. So e to the t times sine t, that part stays the same. Plus, now we're going to take the derivative of sine t. So e to the t stays the same again, but you have times cosine t. And that's the part for i. So then you're going to have plus, and we're going to take the product rule of this as well. So again, e to the t's derivative is just e to the t, and cosine t stays the same. Plus e to the t, the derivative of cosine t is negative sine t. close the parentheses, and then you have j. So if you're going to simplify this, just going to rewrite that here. And then this part on the right with j, you have e to the t cosine t minus e to the t sine t. You take that negative and you move it to the front. Close the parentheses and j. So that's the velocity vector. So moving on to the acceleration vector, that's the derivative of the velocity vector. So we're going to take our answer up here and find its derivative now. So notice you're going to have to use a product rule a few times. So starting here, you'll have e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t. 
and then bring this part down here. Here's a plus sign. And now you have e to the t cosine t plus e to the t negative sine t. And this is all for i. I'm going to simplify this before moving on to j. So we've got e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t plus e to the t cosine t minus e to the t sine t. And that's all for i. So what you want to do here is look to see if there's anything you can combine. And if you notice, e to the t sine t can be combined with negative e to the t sine t. So those actually cancel out. And then the two middle parts can be combined. 2 e to the t cosine t. And that's the final component for i. So now let's go ahead and move on to j. So right up here, you've got e to the t cosine t plus e to the t negative sine t minus e to the t sine t. And this time, by the way, I put this parentheses because you have this minus sign here. You're going to have to distribute that. So continuing on, plus e to the t cosine t, cosine being the derivative of sine. So that goes with j. So let's move down here and simplify everything. The acceleration vector equals the first derivative of the velocity vector. We have the i component, 2e to the t cosine t i, and now plus, we're going to go ahead and just simplify this one step at a time, just so it's easier to keep track of what's going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative sign into both terms. So that becomes negative e to the t sine t minus e to the t cosine t. Close the parentheses and you have j. And once again, you're going to see that you can combine this part with this part. So they go away. They cancel out. And the two parts in the middle combine. So you have 2e to the t cosine ti plus negative 2 e to the t sine t j. And really you can bring this negative outside. So it's what I'm going to do here. So right here you have your acceleration vector and that's the answer for that part. So now for the final part we're going to find speed. So remember that speed is going to be the magnitude of the velocity vector. To find that, that's going to be the square root of the i component squared and the j component squared. So the i component squared is e to the t sine t plus e to the t cosine t squared plus e to the t cosine t minus e to the t sine t squared. So the first thing you have to do is actually square the binomials. If you notice that both binomials are actually special binomial products, you can save some time. So for instance, this first one on the left is actually a plus b squared, which turns into a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this one on the right is actually a minus b squared. And that turns into a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So using this, you can actually save a few steps. You don't have to foil it out the long way. 
So let's work on the one on the left. That's going to be e to the 2t sine squared t plus 2e to the 2t sine t cosine t plus e to the 2t cosine squared t. Now the part on the right. That's going to be e to the 2t cosine squared t minus 2e to the 2t sine t cosine t plus e to the 2t sine squared t. What you want to do now is look for any parts that are like terms that you can combine. So let's see. We can actually get rid of this positive 2e to the 2t part because it cancels out with this negative 2e to the 2t part. So that's one thing. Now, the part on the far left and the part on the far right are like terms. You can add them. You have 2e to the 2t sine squared t. And then the two parts remaining in the middle are the same. They're like terms, and you can just combine them that way. So then you have plus 2e to the 2t cosine squared t. If you factor out a 2e to the 2t from both of these parts, you have sine squared t plus cosine squared t. In trigonometry, there's a formula. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So instead of theta, you have t's here, and it still follows the exact same rule. So 2e to the 2t, this part in the parentheses with sine squared and plus cosine squared t, that's just 1. So really, all of these terms just end up equaling 2e to the 2t. Now you can actually simplify this a little further. You can split up the 2 and the e to the 2t and see them as separate parts. You can even rearrange them like this if it helps to see it. Just put the e to the 2t on the left side. Because now you can take the square root of that, which is just going to be e to the t times the square root of 2. And this is the speed. This is your answer. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe for more videos.